today I have another delicious episode of Confessions. I'm Barbie Jean, your host, and we are going to be talking about threesomes, humiliation and degradation kink, and it's going to be fun. So, and I have a surprising announcement at the end, so please stay tuned. Let's get into it. Welcome to Sweet Elise. The first confession I have is, the best sex of my life was with a married MILF. Now I can't unsee all married MILFs around me. (laughs) Love that for you. I can relate not to the MILFs, but I have had so much wonderful sex with surfer men. And I feel like every time I meet a surfer bro, I'm like, yeah, you're good in bed. I just know it because the best sex I've ever had, my top three, top five, really, I feel (laughs) is they're all surfers. (laughs) So I feel like that's just, uh, I can relate, (laughs) but please, if you're hooking up with MILFs, married women, please just make sure everyone is being honest and consensual and that everyone is happy and comfortable with what's going on. I do not support cheating and lying. So just know that. And I hope that you're respecting everyone involved. Next, the ultimate fantasy I have is to double penetrate a woman with her husband, me being in the ass. Yeah, of course you want to be in the booty. (laughs) Who doesn't? This is called double penetration. So a lot of people are interested in this. This can be explored with just one partner. If you're interested in trying it out, try with an anal um, plug first. Then you can also do dildos. Vibrators, of course, are fun to use too. But yeah, if you're interested in group play and you know going to parties or just orgies or experiencing threesomes and foursomes and moresomes, <laughs> then this could also be something that you could try. I've really only tried DVP. I've tried DP um, with like plugs and, and vibrators and stuff, but for me, it's too much stimulation. I'm more of a one track girl. (laughs) If too many things are going on, I'm like, oh my gosh. But, you know, I'm moving more towards that um, multiple things. I I kind of am shifting in my sexuality in that way. Um, So, we all, again, we evolve and change and grow. And that's what's beautiful about our sexual energy is it changes over time and we're able to explore and try new things. Hopefully, if you're, if you're in a relationship that allows you to do that and, and in the right mind that allows you to feel, comfortable exploring your sexual energy and your erotic authenticity, which again, I promote and really want you to enjoy yourself and have fun and and enjoy all your fantasies. So to this person that confessed this, I appreciate your confession. Please check out some of those dating apps. See if there's, you know, ways that you can explore this with couples and, and people that are interested in finding someone to do this. I don't know if they'll always give you the booty. That might be tough, (laughs) but who knows? I fully support this. And I I hope that you find that you find a couple that's willing to fulfill this fantasy for you, or maybe just find a couple that has the same fantasy. That's probably the best way to do it is find someone that's looking for a guy to come in and, and do DP. So wishing you the best. Good luck. Next, there is a female friend that we shared some porn gifs while talking about our fantasy worlds, and looks like we both are into threesomes and foursomes. I am married. I am sure we both want it to happen with each other, but none of us has courage to mention it. So yeah, this is definitely a confession. (laughs) Thank you for sharing. I, you know, the fact that you're sharing these porn gifs with a female friend that's not your wife is a little bit sketch a little bit shady. I just hope that you're prioritizing your wife and your partnership and the woman that you promise to stay true to and and be honest with and respect. That is, that is your priority, your wife. And so if you're putting the sexual energy elsewhere to this female friend of yours, if you're sharing porn gifs to each other, that is just not, (laughs) it's not what you should be doing unless it's consensual and your wife knows. I don't really know It seems like you're both, I'm not sure if you're talking about you both want it to happen, you and this female friend or you and your wife, Um, but the fact that you don't have courage to mention it, you know, it's okay to not have the courage. It's okay to be scared. It's okay to be nervous because talking about sex is still so taboo. Sharing our fantasies and our deep desires is still 
difficult for so many of us and, and, and really for all of us. Like I still feel a little nervous sometimes when I talk about certain things and sex and what I like and what I don't like, it can, it can be daunting. So just know that, that you're not alone in these feelings. But if you are curious about exploring threesomes with this female friend, I think you should definitely talk to your wife about that first and, you know, let her know that you've been sharing some of these videos or, you know, just keep her in the loop with that because that could be very disrespectful for her if she doesn't know that you're having kind of these side conversations that don't include her. Now, again, like I don't, I don't condone cheating and lying. And so even if your wife isn't involved in this conversation, like she is involved, she is your wife. (laughs) So you need to involve her in these conversations. You need to let her know that you have these fantasies, that you're curious about exploring this. And maybe there's ways that you can explore it together. Like, watching threesome porn, watching some, yeah, some kinky porn together or, you know, playing with talking about it during sex or, you know, fantasizing about certain things together can be really wonderful to grow as a couple. And so I just really encourage you to focus that energy and that fantasizing with on, on your wife, because she really is the priority. If you're starting to put this sexual energy to another woman, I just hope that everyone is consensual and that everything is happening respectfully and and honest and honesty for sure. If you're interested in learning more about threesomes and how to communicate and and how to find threesomes and and how to explore them, please check out my threesomes video. I will link that here. <laughs> um, but let's move on. So the next one is my girlfriend said she fantasized about a threesome. So on her birthday, I took her to a nice dinner and then back to our place where a tall, handsome bull was lying naked. We spit roasted her. She now has a new request, MMMF. Currently talking to the bull's friend, smiley face. (laughs) Yay, thanks for sharing. I love this confession. So for those of you that don't know what this acronym is, MMMF or any variation of the letters with M and F is male and female. So that is just used to describe certain threesomes and foursomes and all of that. So if you ever see MFM or whatever it is, MMF, um, FFM, all of that, they're kind of used in all different variations, but that just means the gender of the people involved. So your girl wanted two men and, and her, and you plated it up on a platter for her. And I just fucking love that. It is so beautiful when partners are willing to listen and hear your fantasy. They also are into it as well. Like that, that really helps <laughs> if they don't have, if it's not boundary crossing for them, if, if maybe they had lots of conversations about it, maybe they talked about certain rules or things that make them nervous. Um, or, you know, really having those conversations ahead of time is so important. But then the fact that you found someone and surprised her with that is just so beautiful. I love that. That is just such a special trait that I envy in relationships. And I I just think it's so beautiful when you can share your fantasies and your desires and then just be gifted that is just such a beautiful experience. You know, of course you have to stay true to what your comfort level is. And if this is not, if your partner divulges a fantasy and it's like, oh, that is too much for me, then don't do it. But when when our fantasies merge and when we're able to just give that love and energy and passion to our partner in a spontaneous or in just a a playful manner, that is, that is when the magic happens. (laughs) And I really encourage us all to do that. And, And not always with other people involved, like that can be kind of intense as a surprise for some of us, but certain fantasies, like that is really fun, especially with Valentine's day coming up. That is just a really fun way to surprise your partner, to tell your lover how much you love them is to fulfill one of their fantasies in a special way. Like that is just so kinky and so beautiful and so special to have that. And so I just commend you. Like that is so amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. I really hope that you find this other man to enjoy this MMFM or MMMF, whatever. 
three nails and her. I I am so excited for that for you and for her. And I just am so happy that you have been so encouraging and gifting her these fantasies just on a platter. I love that. So amazing. Next, I have this really dirty fantasy for having a threesome where one of the girls is an alpha and the other is subbing. I love when girls slap each other's butts and grab their tits. <laughs> yeah, I like that too. But I have this fantasy for one girl to humiliate and degrade the other while I fuck her brains out. Yeah, so again, we have this threesome fantasy. Um, the power play dynamic is very common. In threesomes, it kind of rounds it out when one person is more submissive and one person is more dominant. Like that is a fantasy. I get it. <laughs> it's beautiful that way. I find that I tap into my more dominant energy when we have female lovers over with me and my partner. And that's really fun to have those opposites and, and to explore that in a, in a threesome setting. Um, bringing up the topic of, you know, humiliation and degradation, that's what we're going to move into next. Um, but I do want to say that one of my ways of describing this is respectfully disrespecting because you have to know how to respectfully disrespect your partner when they're interested in being dominated in this humiliation, degradation, kink way. So let's move on to this next question or this next confession, because then I'll just go head first <laughs> into degradation and humiliation. But I want to hear this confession first. I'm recently 19 and have developed a kink for degradation, humiliation, porn. It's difficult because it turns me on and I enjoy it, but it continues to make me more insecure, especially because I don't have a lot of experience with women. Yeah, you are young. You're only 19. Please take it slow. And the fact that you say that this makes you more insecure, one, kinks and fetishes and fantasies, it's hard not to feel judged and insecure maybe, or, you know, some heavy emotions might come forward when we talk about sex, when we think about sex and our sexuality and all of that, because it's still so taboo to talk about sex and, and be free in our sexual energy for so many of us. So I just want to remind you that it's okay that you're having these feelings that is completely normal and that nothing is wrong with you and you are who you are and, and you really should love yourself for that. But if you want to explore this humiliation and degradation kink, it's really important for you to be secure in yourself and for you to feel good about your sexual energy and your body and all of that. Because when you involve this psychological pain, this humiliation or this degradation and belittling and dehumanizing and all of this, um, this range of this kink, it can teeter on the edge of you know, verbal or emotional abuse because it is this psychological pleasure. So if, if you are feeling insecure, I wouldn't really encourage you to go down this path just yet. That doesn't mean you can't explore and, and educate yourself about what you like about it, but just be mindful that it can be very triggering for people. And that's why it's so important before you explore these kinks is to communicate and understand your boundaries and know your limits and those trigger words and what you want your partner or lover to say or not say. So before you explore this, just know that one side is humiliation. That's the embarrassing side. It's feeling humiliated. And then degradation is a completely other side of it, which is basically dehumanizing, belittling, making you feel like an object or an animal. Like that's very common. So these are two very different things, but they also are often used together. So just know though that some people like to be humiliated, but they may not like degradation. So just know kind of the difference of the two. And if you're interested in exploring this, just have those conversations and know what your boundaries are. Because again, it can be really easy to get caught up in the slurs and the insults and the verbiage that maybe your lover and partner was you is using on you and be triggered. So have those safe words, know what you like and, and really talk to your partner about what phrases and what words you want them to use. That is what will make this scene so perfect and powerful. And that's what I really encourage people to do when they explore BDSM and, and different things is to really 
play it out in your head, write a script, like be creative with it. Cause that's what will give you the most pleasure and the most fun is when it is exactly how you imagine it and want it to be. Now, I would love to also get into kind of ways that you can explore it. Oh, oh but first I want to talk about the different kinds. So there's obviously there's verbal that's really common. So that could be just saying like, I don't know, like, are you even in yet? Like, you know, it's kind of like verbally humiliating or making, you know, maybe making comments about their body or slur words or insults or things like that. A lot of people get really turned on by that in the bedroom. Um, Public is another form, which someone actually reached out to me recently about too, is he wanted to feel more publicly humiliated in his relationship. And this could be you know, there's a lot of ways to do this. This could just be like an online forum or an online chat or having your partner like say things about you online. It could be to friends and colleagues. It could be you, you know, whatever it is that you are turned on by, it could be your partner actually saying those things about you and, or even not saying those things about you in a public setting, but coming back to you and just making a scene where she like tells you how much she told her friends about this thing about you, whatever it is that turns you on. Um, and then saying like, oh, they all laughed or, you know, using this kind of script and this idea to like share public humiliation or degradation can be really, can be a huge turn on for some people. And then there's the physical part of it. So physical is more like these physical acts, like whether you're forcing them to give you oral, whether you're forcing like a certain, um, like rimming or just forcing them to take their clothes off in certain ways, or just this physical act of, um, humiliation or degradation. And then there's the sexual. So obviously a lot of these are under like the sexual umbrella, (laughs) but verbal is, you know, obviously your mouth and, and the public is public and physical is like physical acts, but then sexual is like actual sexual acts. So whether that's certain penetration techniques or, you know, using um, certain sexual things to humiliate or degrade. Um, so just know kind of what turns you on if this is something that interests you and, and again, where your boundaries lie before you explore this array of pleasure. And then ideas for exploring this. I have a lot. <laughs> Servitude is really popular, like literally like serving your partner, um, forced gratification. Um, prohibiting clothing. I kind of mentioned that. So like making your partner not wear certain clothes for certain things can be humiliating and degrading in some ways. Um, scolding, criticizing, slurs, insults, like all of that, again, can be teetering on the edge of verbal abuse. So you just want to know what words, what slurs you're comfortable with and what feel good and turn you on and which ones you don't want your partner to say. Like, I know that in my BDSM exploration, I was too young. I didn't know what I liked. I didn't know what I wanted. And I was just pleasing my partner. And I was into like trying new things. But in that process, I, you know, was dating a sadist and he really liked to inflict pain and degrade me and and um punish me. And looking back, it was never, <laughs> it was never a pleasurable experience for me, but I did it because I I knew it turned him on and I just kind of like tried to separate myself in that moment, but you should never do something that doesn't feel good for you. And that's why to this 19 year old that confessed, I really encourage you to like take your time with it because this is a very, um, again, it's psychological play and that can be, it can be really, um, painful. And, you know, On the topic of pain (laughs) and sadism and masochism, you know, this is under the masochist umbrella. So maybe if you're curious about this humiliation and degradation kink, look up masochism too. And that could be another avenue that you can explore as well in other ways. But back to, you know, the different kinds and things that you can explore with, you know, for the degradation side, using your partner or, um, the person that feel that wants to be degraded as like a toilet or as, uh, um, like a footrest, you know, put treating them as like an object, objectifying them is a really popular way to do it and can be really a turn on for people that are into this. Also treating them like an animal that can be really fun. Um, I know, like, I remember watching this, um, the hump film fest, which I love going to, 
there was a scene where he was getting forced um, to cover himself with like chocolate and like rolling around in it in this in this like humiliating way. And so that could also be fun, like putting food all over their body or writing slurs on their body, like you know, using their body as as uh, a play space can be really fun too for you. But again, like just really think about what would be fun and what would turn you on and 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 just be careful with your limits and your boundaries. And just always remember that safe words are so important <laughs> and aftercare is so important. Even with threesomes, like if you're exploring threesomes or, ex- or kinks, anything new in the bedroom, just focus your energy on the aftercare. Um, we talk about, you know, there's this term called sub drop or um, bottom drop, or it also has to do with top drop or dom drop as well. And it's really just this this um, energy level that feels depleted after we have these high intense sessions of pleasure, especially when they are dealing with BDSM and psychological and, and, and pain and physical and all of that. So it's just important to re um, re up your energy and hydrate and, you know, have a Gatorade or, you know, take some vitamins <laughs> Um, have some tea, you know, focus on that aftercare, focus on cuddling or TV time or have a bath or cuddle your fur babies, like whatever it is that s- makes you feel and like reinvigorates you is really important when exploring any new thing in the bedroom. Just really encourage that. And I think sometimes we forget, even I forget um, that it is really important to like just prioritize your well being after intense sessions of pleasure. So that's where I'm going to stop today. You know, we talked about these threesomes a lot. We talked about this degradation and humiliation kink, and I hope that you guys learned some stuff and please feel free to ask me questions. Please add more confessions to my list of confessions to get through. I'll link that below. And finally, I would like to share my announcement, which is next week, a week from today, actually, um, I am hosting an in-person workshop. I still have several spots available, so please sign up on my website. I would love to have you join. But basically, this is a three-hour in-person workshop where we are unveiling your erotic authenticity. Now, it is in Marina Del Rey at this private residence on the water. Um, Los Angeles-based people, please travel. Come to it. Even if you're out of town, please come. It's going to be an unforgettable night with lots of magic and pleasure and fun. Basically, I'm guiding you through with some knowledge, some meditation, a liberating writing exercise, and then finishing off with this time for sensory play with feathers and toys and and all of that. It's really just a night to like indulge in your senses and learn, but also dive deep into your mind and understand what your core erotic desires are. A lot of us don't even know what we like until we really think about it. And a lot of us are so busy in our everyday life, even in our relationships, when we're asked what we like or what we want or what we desire. Sometimes we just kind of say what we see on TV or we say what we saw in porn and we don't really know truly what our core intimate desires are. And I'm going to guide you through this really incredible meditation that worked so well on my previous um, couples retreat workshop that I did. And it really allowed these um, people to tap into what their fantasies are. And then following that with this writing exercise is just going to be so liberating for you to get that fantasy on paper and then have this vulnerable discussion if you're willing to share and open up and just be in this judgment-free space with a small group of people. And then to finish it off with like just kind of indulging in some toys and feathers and kind of igniting the senses on your body. It's just a great way to connect with yourself and connect with your sexual energy. And we don't often spend time doing that. So please, I encourage you to come join, meet me, go on this journey with me and some other select individuals. And it's going to be a magical experience. And I hope to see you there. So thanks again for being here. Please just be sweet to yourself, be sweet to your lovers, and just be sweet out there in general, y'all. I appreciate you guys. 
Thanks so much. Talk soon. Mwah.